In this video, I will demonstrate how to transform your Google Spreadsheet into a fully featured to-do list app using just 50 lines of code. As you can observe, we have three distinct to-do list categories available, work, personal, and school. You have the flexibility to add new to-do items in two ways. You can either type them directly into the input cell and press enter, or you can effortlessly append new items to the end of the list. Take note of how a checkbox automatically appears to the left of each newly added to-do item. You have the convenience to check and uncheck these items, and notice how the list automatically reorganizes itself when you do so. This ensures that your unchecked items consistently remain at the top, while the checked items gracefully move downward, mirroring the behavior of a typical to-do list app. Now, let's delve into the underlying mechanics powering this fantastic feature. You will also learn some of the common features in Google Sheet, like data validation, conditional formatting, and sorting. We will use data validation for checkboxes and conditional formatting for the striking through effect when we click on a checkbox. We will also sort the list programmatically using Google Apps Script. Finally, we will take help of Google Apps Script's event object to automatically display checkboxes when we add a new to-do item and also to insert new to-do item at the top of the list by typing and then hitting enter, and also returning the focus back to the input cell. So, let's get started. I've reserved the first row specifically for entering the name of the to-do category. The second row will be used for the input field. Starting from the third row onward, you can begin entering your to-do items. Please keep in mind the specific columns in which you will render checkboxes and the columns in which you will enter to-do items, as this is closely tied to the app's script code. If you decide to make changes, remember to adjust the code accordingly. Now, you may have noticed that when I check any to-do item, it gets a strike-through effect. This is achieved through straightforward conditional formatting. Let me demonstrate this in another tab here. But before that, it's essential to understand that checkboxes essentially display true as a checked box and false as an empty box. In the range B2 IB10, I've added various true and false values in different cells. Now, navigate to data, then data validation, and select checkbox as the criteria. Observe how true and false values are converted into checked and empty checkboxes. Next, let's apply conditional formatting. Select the range C2 C10 on, go to format, then conditional formatting, and click on add another rule. Choose custom formula is, and enter B true. You might be wondering why we reference B2. This sets a rule for the first cell in the selected range, C1, and applies formatting based on B1. It subsequently applies this rule to all the cells based on the value in the relative cell. For instance, B2 for C2, B3 for C3, and so on. Now, select the appropriate font styling in the formatting style section and click done. As you can see, it's a straightforward process. So, this is how I've set up the sheet, and it's now clear how the strike through effect is achieved. Now, let's examine the code and understand what happens when you enter a new to do item in the input cell. When you type here and hit enter, the onEdit function is called with the event object as a parameter. We extract the sheet firing this event and retrieve the edited column and row. This block of code checks if the edited range happens to be one of the cells from B2, E2, or H2. If it matches, it calls the onEnter key press function and passes the event object to it. In line 42, this code takes a range offset by one row and two columns wide relative to the input cell, then inserts new cells, pushing the existing content down. Following that, it takes the cell that is offset by one row and one column, i.e. cell C3, and sets its value equal to the value of the input range. Line 44 is responsible for programmatically adding a checkbox to the cell that is offset by one row relative to the input cell. Finally, we clear the input range and bring back the focus to it. You may have also noticed that when we check or uncheck items, the list rearranges itself. This behavior is handled in this part of the code. First, we check if the edited column is one of the columns B, E, or H by switching its column index. Then we call the sort range function, passing down the edited column index and the corresponding range containing the to-do items. The sort range function sorts the items by the values in the checkbox column, 
which are either true or false. You may have also noticed that when we add a new item to the list, a checkbox automatically appears. This functionality is managed in the following way. We first check if the edited range corresponds to the third, sixth, or ninth column. Once we determine that, we simply apply a checkbox data validation rule to the cell immediately to the left of it. So, there you have it, a seamless process that enhances the usability of your to-do app. If you found this helpful, please let me know by liking this video and subscribing if you haven't already. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.